Back in the year 83, a young cowboy named Fuji Takanori Gucci saved a drowning Kenan Mitsubishi Sashimi, and he pulled them from the creek where they were trying to get gold, the only real investment in 2022. Stark market's crashing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, buy silver and gold. Fuji saved Kenan's life because Kenan was colorblind and couldn't focus on the real truth, which was that making babies is fun. And so Fuji's better, and I'll prove it today. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So we got a couple hefty sacks here. The big boys. The cannon's actually lighter. A little longer, and it extends out. This size is a lie. We all know that. Because this is what you have to do. That's a bitch. Can't even fill the shot with it. So I took these out for a little wildlife battle because... I needed some revenge. The cannon rudely destroyed my Sony. There were some moments where the Sony shined its light bright deep because Canon has one major flaw and we'll get to that. But thank you Camera Canada for lending me the gear. I think somebody bought the open deal, open box deal that I was advertising. One of you probably traveled in time to the future to see my videos, see it advertised and then went back because someone bought it before I even released the first episode. So that was rude. And let me just say, you you profited the least you possibly could have from time traveling. You could have bet on sporting events. You could have done anything. You went back in time to get an open box deal. You probably got the extended warranty too, which canceled it. You suck. I got some cool shots today. This wasn't one of them. But here's the Fuji at... See, I could get both ducks in the shot. I zoomed out a little bit and I was like, you know what? There, we got a team, tag team of happiness, snow falling blissfully. We're out in the 100 to 400. It's like, wow, Canon, I had to get the close up of the duck. Probably the better shots, more detailed. It's like, okay, just show the one that's doing something, winking at me, coming towards me, begging for bread. I didn't have any. That was unfortunate. She starved and died later that day. Then I tried APS-C mode. HD 120p in C log 3 just to see 10 bit glory, but APS-C mode, can I edit the files? I can. I can edit HD in 10 bit. Not bad. Not bad. It was a bullshit shot, but side by side, back to regular 4K 120p versus 4K 60p, I think Fuji looks a little sharper. Just a little sharper on that Fuji. Better shot, better colors, maybe. They look identical almost, but. Look, the duck's chewing something in agreement with me. Moving along, I saw another duck in a tree. Don't come here for bird identification. I don't know what this is. I have a book and I do look them up, but nothing is guaranteed. So I just wanted to test Fuji HD 120p versus 240 frames per second. I have to repeat the clip now. I spoke too long. I can't believe how much better the 120 frames looks. Like, in this situation, you can see all the moiré, the aliasing in the bird's feathers. It's terrible, but it doesn't always show up. So there's moments where you can use this. It looks so special and mythical in that 240 frames per second. It's just, you deal with it. You deal with the weird artifacts. But it doesn't always show up, but there, it showed, and it hurt. And here's just HD 120 frames per second versus 4K 60. And I'm just so surprised at how good that HD 120p looks. Like it's barely softer than the 4K 60p. Like it's almost right there. And last test before we show you what the Canon can do. I wanted to see, because Fuji has an 18% crop in 4K 60p, but you can also put on the mandatory 29% crop in all modes. So I wanted to see like, is it worse if we crop in? I saw no difference really, only we get more reach, so I'm debating keeping that 1.29 times crop on all the time in the Fuji, so it's no matter what I shoot, 240 frames per second or 4K 60p, it's the same crop. It's workable, it's just the stay will get slightly harder to do, but it still looked really good. Now here is where we see the major flaw of this Canon lens, the minimum focus distance. 
if you got little tiny and the, those little glitches i don't know what those are i think that's due to the memory card or something i'm using a cf express sony card it's not good enough so get one of those delkins or whatever the best one is i forget but it might be that like it's just something glitches and it happens on multiple clips every time i go out at least two clips are corrupted like that that could ruin your life i can't guarantee i even nailed focus on this i was like is this bird gonna let me back up and get him in the shot still and he did but just i had to manually focus because animal eye detect through those branches and shit that wasn't working so i don't know it's a spec that you don't think about, but there was many times where I'm like, oh, there's a, wow, he's super close to me. Oh, I cannot focus on you piece of shit, Canon. So in my opinion, if you're going into the Canon system, you have to get that 100 to 500. I don't know if the 600 mil Tony 11 has a shorter focusing distance. It probably does, and it might work, but you ain't filling the frame like on the Fuji. That thing could focus within itself. That's how close it is with inside here's a little APS-C mode that's the hack to get in and then you're punching in was it in focus I doubt it but not bad HD 120p on each Fuji wins obviously killed it wasn't even close I'm telling you you can't beat the Fuji system I wish you could but you can it can't be done even full frame Canon like they're trying not even close even 8k raw like what are you gonna do with it it's too shaky it's like what's the point of that maybe on a tripod you could punch in on it and see that i missed focus pretty hard but like how could you even if you punched in it'd be so shaky that's ah, unusable footage if i was heading out right now into the wilderness and i wanted to return safely with magical footage intact i would 100 percent choose the fuji over this canon r5 piece of shit but you can all get one at camera canon Links are dabble. I have a camo hat. I'm completely invisible to my prey. Little pro tip, ju I just thought of this and it's helping me a lot. You know how you see a bird and you're like, okay, and you, where the hell is that? Oh, damn it. Okay, there's a, a fork in the tree there. No, that's not the fork. Line it up with your lens hood. Spot the bird in the top of your lens hood there and then go to the viewfinder you're right there you are right there i just thought of that pro tip achieved i'm filming a video about food addictions on my other channel i just got this slow motion bird in a bath he was bathtubbing there better not be moire in the footage fuj i swear <laughs> i had to go for the 240 frames on that one. Oh, the beauty i bet was ours despite the moire fuji you cannot go wrong. I love this thing so much. Every time I use it, I'm just like, yep, that was the choice. If I had the 100 to 500 on the Canon, things might be a different story. I've never tried that lens. I want to. I want to see it. But for right now, these primes, like that's the hack. They're so cheap and light. It's like, oh, that's what you would get. The 600 mil F11, especially F. Tony 11. 12, 12, 11, 11, 100 to 500 is so expensive and it's pretty heavy but as we witness the 100 to 400 on the fuji 4k 60p not bad not bad side by side with the 4k 120p it's like to me uh, the fuji is good it looks good better better blacks darker blacks no one's talking about that what's with the red blacks huh huh canon then we have the super slow the squirrel even noticed it he's like are you shooting 240 frames right now wow that's amazing how come canon can't do that that's weird seriously it's not in the menu oh man that sucks APS-C mode hmm not bad versus HD 240p I don't know canon looks pretty good there except all the artifacts and weird colors in the squirrel's fur you piece of shit now here is where the biggest blunder in my life came I'm walking through these woods. I see this giant red-headed woodpecker thing. I was like, oh my God, is that the pileated woodpecker? And I'm like panicking. It was so big. And then it moved behind the tree. And I was like, I brought it up and I was like, you're gone. Okay. So I had ideas. I was like, okay, get closer 
if I go this way, I'm gonna be so close to it that he'll probably fly off. If I go this way, backlit in a bad way, it's not gonna look good. So I took the slow approach. I'm getting there, I'm like, peeking behind, I'm like, where is it? Probably like an hour and a half ago, he flew off. As soon as I noticed him, he was gone, I bet. I didn't see where he went. He disappeared into the night. He went behind the tree and probably flew with an eye of sight, hiding himself in the tree for miles. And he knew that. And I missed it. I didn't get it. And it wasn't the pileated one. I looked it up. It was the red-bellied woodpecker. They have no red bellies. It even says in the book, the irony is, they don't actually have them. Why the fuck did you name it that? Calm down. It's just a bird. He had a red head and then like this black and white all on the body. And he, they disappear. They disappear fast. I can't believe he just turned and I was like, okay, he's on the other side of this tree. Take your time. But he was gone. Where did you go? Where did they go? He couldn't have went in the tree. Maybe he did. Oh man, I'll never see him again. I did see his little brother though, and he witnessed the whole thing. He was laughing at me. He's like, yeah, I saw him. He just flew somewhere, disappeared basically into the mist. So that was a little 4K, 60p versus 240 frames. It's like the 240 is so much more magical and you didn't see the moire in that clip. It wasn't like noticeable. So sometimes, it works out. I don't know what that's all about. If you can fix it in post. I saw people trying, but they do so many weird things like, oh, black and white layer. Fuck you. 4K 60p, it's like, it's not slow enough for me, but if you want the ultimate quality, it's good. But now that I know that the 120p is so good on the Fuji, I think I would rather just switch between 240 and 120. And I think I will do that. But Canon, that's a good shot. HD. APS-C, red colors of the bird, slow flakes falling. It's like, ah, you can get some stuff on that Canon. It's glorious. I kind of want to take it out just to try photos only, because then it's like, I've never done that. Head out into the wilderness to try to only take photos. We got the bird eye detect, like, it works sometimes. Not in these situations, but sometimes it does. Yeah, the Canon looked better colors right there. It had nicer reds. I probably could have just raised the saturation on Fuji. I suck at my job. So slowly I am trying each system and I'm seeing the pros and the cons from each. It's like Canon is so good. Like the stabilization, 800 mil, no problem, handheld. Beautiful Ibis. Just like maybe leading the industry. They're that good. Better than Micro Four Thirds. I'll tell you that much. So like Olympus, what are you doing? Nothing, nothing good. I love the color science, the sharpness of that lens, the codex. There's no 240 frames, that hurts. 4K 120p or HD 120p doesn't make sense. Downgrades for no positives. Pretty easy to use. Manual focus works. I detect when it works is good. Not bad. Fuji, just more magical look to it, more cinematic, slower, better, sharper, sometimes. Leather pants, bring them with you. Not bad. Sony, little shaky. Little shaky, isn't it? But feeling nice, I like the way the lens feels. 4K 120p, easy to edit, in log. Can't do that on the Canon, haven't even tried, wouldn't want to. So, so far I feel 100% justified that buying the Fuji was the right decision for me and it just works the best. There's nothing that can compete for the price and the weight. Not bad, we'll see what's on the horizon, but it's mostly Fuji related stuff to beat themselves. So things I'm looking forward to trying are the Sony 200 to 600, we'll see if I can get a copy in somehow, the Canon 100 to 500 on an R5C, is the stabilization, nah, it's not gonna work. You need that IBIS. Anything else? I don't think there is. Nothing else excites me. I do wanna try the Panasonic GH6 with the Leica 50 to 200 with the 1.4 times converter. 560 mil roughly, it could work. 
And I do want to try that Olympus jumbo lens, 150 to 400 with the OM-1 and see if you spend more money than any other system and get worse results, could you still live with yourself? I could. So if you're worried about the Tony 11, it's like this was a cloudy day, snowy bullshit footage here, but I've never noticed that like, oh, ISO is a problem here. My footage is too noisy. Like even with no light, I mean, it looks like trash right there. That's a terrible shot. It's my fault. But like I've never been in a situation where F11, oh no, I can't do that. It's like, who cares? It's the minimum focus distance that ruins those lenses. So let me know if the 600's better. I doubt it. Which are you gonna buy through my affiliate links? None of them. That's good. That was a lot of work for no money. Oh, that it hurts to be me. You'll subscribe though to make it up through ad revenue. You use ad block. Oh, that's a, that's cool. I, I don't mind. Who cares that 50% of my earnings are just chopped right off? I don't mind those dividends. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fuck you.